Welcome to our services in Eastertide. We have been through the journey of Lent and now we take another journey of equivalent length as we move from Easter Day through to Pentecost, as we reflect on the experience of the first disciples, those first followers of Jesus who heard his message and who shared in the joy of celebrating his resurrection. As you enter into this time of prayer, may it be a time for you which draws you closer to God and to one another. Blessings on you as you share in this time. Please let us know if there is any way in which we can help you. Take some time in silence. Pick up your Bible and be ready to be able to follow the readings and pray with us for yourself as well as for all who are around you and all around the world. which, if you have your prayer book, begins on page 18, but all of the words that you need will be there on the screen. Through Christ, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, who was and is and is to come. Open our lips, O Lord, and, and we, we shall, shall declare your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please join with me in singing, By your kingly power, O risen Lord.
friends in Christ, we come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We will lift up our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's holy word and pray for this world and for ourselves. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us. Wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your Spirit, that we may live in the new life to your glory. We ask in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And St. Paul wrote, Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Wherever you are, offer peace to those around you and send peace to all those who you love. Grace and peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Come, let us sing to the Lord, shout to the rock of our salvation. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his face with songs of joy. Roger and I will sing the hymn of the risen Christ, the Easter anthems. You're welcome to join with us. If you have a copy of the booklet, then the music for the chant is included there. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by one man came death, by another has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be Heaven 
Heavenly Father, give us wisdom and understanding as we listen to your word. May we know you better, love you more, and learn to please you in all we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now invite Sharon Mitchell to read for us the first reading. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is un as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grasp for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We now hear the psalm from Psalm 66, verses 7 to 19. Psalm 66, verses 7 to 19. O bless our God, you peoples, and cause his praises to resound, who has held our souls in life, who has not suffered our feet to slip. For you have proved us, O God, you have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net, you laid sharp torment on our loins. You let our enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of liberty. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, the vows that opened my lips, that my mouth uttered when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fattened beasts with the sweet smoke of rams. I will sacrifice a bull and the flesh of goats. Come then and hear all you that fear God and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called to him with my mouth and his praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished wickedness in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me, but God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not turned back my prayer or his steadfast love from me. We now have a reading from the New Testament from the first letter of Peter. A reading from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 to 22. Finally, all of you have unity of the Spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you are called, that you might inherit a blessing. For those who desire life, and desire to see good days. Let them keep their tongues from evil and their lips from speaking deceit. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let them seek peace and pursue it. 
for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for do co good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for his sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but has an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authority and powers made subject to him. Please join with me in singing this beautiful hymn, God is love, let heaven adore him.
now have the reading from the Gospel, from John's Gospel, chapter 14. John chapter 14 verses 15 to 21 Jesus said if you love me you will keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Hear the word of the Gospel. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When we get to look back and think about what we have done during this time of COVID-19 isolation, I wonder what will be tallied on your list. What is it that you will remember as having worked through, achieved, accomplished, perhaps crossed off your bucket list, or in a more mundane sense, your to-do list? There are some of those bigger things there, but Sharon and I have also enjoyed watching a few series of movies and other TV shows. Over several weeks, we watched through all of the James Bond movies, in order, all 24. We did start watching the spoof with David Niven as James Bond, but decided that that was a bit silly. There are many things we noticed about those movies, including the way that the character of James Bond changed over time in more ways than just having different actors. In one of those movies, Goldeneye, there is a strong theme of revenge. There are surprising twists in the movie, and James Bond wins in the end, of course. But so much pain and mayhem and destruction is caused by those who are holding on to a desire for revenge. And they had been holding on to it for a long time too, a lifetime. There is an old saying, a bitterly sad saying, which suggests that revenge is a dish best served cold. Endless suffering has been caused by generation after generation in some places holding grudges. In the state of Virginia in the USA, the most famous of those feuds was between the Hatfields and the McCoys. They appear in lots of movies, even comedies, but they actually existed. In 1863, they started arguing over a pig. Then that led to violence and retribution and endless revenge. It was only in 2003, yes, 2003, 140 years later, that the current family members decided to stop fighting and seeking revenge on each other. What a waste. 
in so many ways. As you listen to our reading today from the first letter of Peter, I wonder if you thought that it was another one of those pie in the sky, impossible to actually live out passages from the Bible. The idea that we might not actually seek to hit back at those who hurt us. Ridiculous, I know. There is that saying about revenge. You wait until they're not looking and then whack. There is another saying that comes in though, the sort of thing that the Hatfields and the McCoys lived out for 140 years. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. Peter encourages the people who first read his letter to be gentle with those who are persecuting them. This was not an easy thing to say or to hear. These were people who were already being ostracised, persecuted, and even physically hurt by people who were outraged that they were Christians. Imagine that, being persecuted for being a Christian. In some parts of the world it happens still. Soon there would be many who were killed for holding their faith. So when Peter encouraged his readers to not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, it was because that was what was actually happening. Abuse and evil being inflicted on them. At the heart of the message was, you're better than this. Don't let yourself be dragged down to their level. In the middle of this passage, Peter wrote, Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands of you an account of the hope that is in you. I've seen that also translated more gently as, Always be prepared to give an account of the hope that is within you. It's used as one of those texts of evangelism, encouraging us to share the good news. But there is also a very important part of that sentence with which Peter continued in the next verse. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Share what gives you hope in the face of persecution and violence and people who really get up your nose and even those who pursue you. Be prepared to share what gives you hope. Respond even to nastiness and criticism and abuse in ways that are loving. Peter is not saying, okay, when they're persecuting you, shove your belief back in their face. Instead, what he means is that when we are responding without revenge, without evil for evil or abuse for abuse, when we diffuse violence with gentleness, then we are very likely to be asked, why? Why not take revenge? Why not let ourselves be dragged down to someone else's level? Why not be predictable? There is a story of a holy man who was given a gift by a rich king in honour of his great wisdom. The gift was an enormous diamond. The holy man simply said, thank you, and popped the diamond in his trusty carry bag. One of the courtiers of the king saw what happened and sent a message to his brother, let's call him Bruce, describing the holy man and the treasure he carried. Bruce waited in a village along the way that the holy man was travelling. When the holy man came to the village, he was surrounded by children and smiling people who were talking to him. They offered him a bed for the night, but he said that he preferred a simple place and set up camp beyond the edge of the village. In the middle of the night, Bruce woke the holy man and, putting a knife to his throat, said, Give me your treasure. The holy man was confused, not knowing what the thief meant. The jewel, the jewel, give it to me. Light dawned for the holy man, who pulled the diamond out and asked, Ah, oh, you mean this? Here, it's yours. You're welcome to it. Bruce grabbed the diamond and ran away. In the morning, Bruce was still sitting, looking at the diamond. 
and in amazement at the way that the rising sun threw prisms of colour around. But as he looked, he became more and more agitated. Leaving the diamond where it lay, Bruce rushed off and found the holy man already on his way along the road. Bruce rushed up to him and grabbed him by the arm and said, Please, please, give it to me. Now the holy man was even more confused. I gave you the jewel last night. No, said Bruce. Give me what you have that is of so much value that that jewel was so easy to give away. The context is a little different, but the theme is the same. When confronted by those who only think in very narrow terms of values and priorities, whether it is greed or violence or anger or revenge or an eye for an eye as the way to live, when they think that is the only way to behave, the hope that is in us will be incredibly confronting. What is that hope? It is found in love. It is found in the belief and trust that being loved is the greatest value. It is found in the recognition that love is something which weaves us together, builds connections and community and relationship, heals and grows and brings life. It is the perfect antidote to revenge. It is what Jesus was talking about in that Gospel reading today. Love. Love which infuses us and builds the connections between ourselves and between us and God. When we are in danger of being dragged into any pettiness of tit-for-tat, or more serious ways in which we feel offended or maligned or damaged by the words or actions of others, the encouragement from God is to avoid stepping into patterns which cause hurt to others or to ourselves by letting loose the darker side of the possibilities that lie within all of us. We are better than that. Now, if you are wondering where this sermon comes from, you may be wondering, is there perhaps some major conflict happening? Actually, the themes of sermons rise out of reflection on the passages from the Bible which we read each week. Read again those passages from the first letter of Peter and the Gospel of John and the others. But it also comes because of the opportunity that we have in this time. The necessary isolation can be like a time of spiritual retreat a time to reflect on our lives and to learn from our experiences and to offer those things to God. It can be a time to reflect on how we treat each other and how we interact. What is the worst and what is the best of the ways in which we spark off each other when we are able to have more contact? within church community and in our interaction in the wider community? Do we ever hold grudges or feel like a bit of payback is needed for some offence? Another of those popular sayings is, don't get mad, get even. Is that ever us? But we are better than that. Live that being better. And it will be confronting and disturbing and give rise to all sorts of questions. Then you have an opportunity to share hope and love. Amen.
pray with the church throughout the world and throughout the ages in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us join together in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be exalted, Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory cover the earth. Keep our nation under your care and guide us in justice and truth. Let your way be known on earth your saving power among all nations. Send out your light and your truth, that, that we may tell of your saving works. Have mercy on the poor and oppressed. Hear the cry of those who need. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for we put our trust in you. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all, all else, we may obtain your promises that exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let your requests be made known unto God. In everything, everything give thanks. I now invite Peter Mann to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. At the end of each prayer, I will say through Jesus Christ and then you may respond Lord God hear our prayer God of all goodness God our creator redeemer and sanctifier whose infinite love and compassionate care fills our lives and the universe you have created we thank you that you emptied yourself and became our humble Saviour through Jesus Christ by your continuous willingness in hearing us when we pray. Come now and help us to pray to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, Lord God, hear, hear our prayer. For our nation of Australia. Holy Father, we thank you with profound gratitude in our lives. We thanks for your abundant grace, serenity, richness in the land, and harmonious blessings which are treasured, embraced, and shared by many nationalities in this island of Australia. Through Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord God, God, hear our prayer. Loving God, help us to share with honesty, be compassionate, embrace justice for all, and support each other without being prejudiced against your venerable people. Help our nation leaders, our national leaders to lead with your Holy Spirit through obedience, dependency, and to be sensitive to the needs and challenges facing our country. Through Jesus Christ, 
Lord God, hear our prayer. For leaders of the Anglican Church, we pray for your Holy Spirit to shine in us, pouring in us the spirit of wisdom, trust, and discernment in all they will do and teach. Loving God, bless and glorify our ministry on social media, on Zoom, Facebook, and any other forms of reaching out to the world in this time. By your grace, strengthen both our bishops, clergy and people to lead, equip, guide, and for them to witness to your community with humble hearts, minds, and clear conscience in all that is done for the building up of your children in all the parishes we gather for worship. Merciful and forgiving God, strengthen our primate of the Anglican Church in Australia, Job Smith, and for the leader of Anglican Communion, Archbishop Justin Walby, through Jesus Christ, Lord God, hear our prayer. Compassionate and loving God, you are our sustainer and transformer from all our struggles. At this moment of global fear, distress and anxiety of COVID-19 pandemic, may people who are living in deep pain confusion and anguish. We humbly seek your face to heal, relieve and restore our hope. Because of your love through Jesus Christ, who came to us, live, minister, die and rise again. We believe in you as our author of life, is the minds and console the hearts of your children those who have lost their loved ones, encourage them to look unto you and our Lord Jesus Christ, triumphant victory of death, hoping and believing in your eternal life we have received through faith in Christ Jesus. Through Jesus Christ, Lord God, hear our prayer. And for those still recovering from illness, bless our doctors, nurses, and many people who are, who are out there helping your people. In our parish of St. Luke's, we pray for all who have asked for our prayer. Pray for Irene and many others for restoration from illness. Father, pour out your peace by the power of the Holy Spirit into our homes, peace between parents, children, and neighbors. Loving God, we pray to protect our soldiers, police forces who are on the forefront to protect, impose law, rule of laws, bless their families and friends. We pray for peace and healing in the most overcrowded refugee camps. We pray for peace and courage in countries struggling with inadequate health provision and peace and hope in countries with tyrannical leaders. We also pray for patient, honest communication, world economy, job security, and for understanding and just peace among superpower nations. Loving God, through Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord he hear our prayer. God of all righteousness, joy, comfort and forgiveness, embrace and embed it in us your truth, and by your continuous presence and guidance, create in us your humility, kindness, patience, honesty, mercy, compassionate care, love, self-control and gentleness by the power of the Spirit. For your, hope, for your glory and the blessing of your church. Help us to accept our responsibilities 
to comfort the brokenhearted, give us your strength and courage to proclaim the good news to the world and to serve with ultimate endurance and perseverance to labor in your word and for us to hold on to the eternal truth that is in your holy words. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your gift, for your life giving for us, for the lives of all your saints who have proclaimed and served, following your footstep with obedience, depending and commitment to you, like those who have gone before us. Help us, those who are now in your service, to look into the future with unwavering minds and hearts. By your grace and mercy anchored our salvation with a short faith and hope in your final return on earth from heaven as our King, compassionate friend, Saviour and righteous judge. Through Christ Jesus. Lord God, hear our prayer. Amen. Faithful God, you have promised to hear the prayers of all who ask in Jesus' name. In your mercy, accept our prayers. Give us what we have asked in faith according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, you have given us grace to agree in these our prayers, and you have promised that when two or three ask in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us. Grant us in this life knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in singing, Come God's People, Sing for Joy. see and probably know a few more people are now allowed to join in these times it is still not a publicly open time of worship but up to 10 people are allowed to be present when these recordings and the live broadcasts are made 
If you would like to join us, please don't just turn up, but please register with our parish office by Thursday each week, and then we will know, and I'll be able to let you know if you're among those who are able to be here. Unfortunately, at the moment, those who are vulnerable still are asked to remain at home and to remain safe. In time, we will be able to gather freely again. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining together with us here at St Luke's Anglican Church in Toowoomba on this day, on this Sunday in Eastertide. We hope that you have been able to experience the love of God enfolding you and surrounding you and sustaining you through this time and in the week ahead. If there are any ways in which we can help, please let us know. Please contact our parish office. And if you would like prayer for yourself or for anyone else, please let us know and we will be able to include you in the prayers that we offer here, both on Sundays and through Facebook on weekdays. If there are particular hymns that you would like to join in singing, then let us know through our parish office and we will try to be able to incorporate those through this time and into the time ahead. Blessings on you and on your family.